Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Tonight, we have very special guest, Noah Segan, who is the writer, director, and star of Blood Relatives, which premiered yesterday exclusively on Shudder, streaming now. Noah, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing great, John. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. And like I told you before we got started, I love the car in the background, and it's very significant to the film, so we'll we'll touch on that in a little bit. Now, as I said, you wrote, directed, starred in this film, which is a story, it's a father-daughter story uniting for the first time, who happen to be vampires. Uh, what was your inspiration for your take on vampires and adding the whole father daughter element to it well i've uh yeah i've been working in genre film for my whole career really i mean i'm i'm, I'm one of those nerds who thinks that every movie is a genre movie right <laughs> and you know uh and particularly i've worked on a lot of a lot of horror movies and it's been a community that has been very generous to me um uh uh you know we welcome people we try to get as many people under the umbrella as we can Absolutely. Um, and so when i was thinking about making a movie i don't think there was really any choice that i felt uh other than uh, what is my genre what sandbox am i going to play in you know and I've, I've always loved vampires i've never had a chance to work on a vampire movie i thought you know as i was trying to sort of figure out what you know what i was trying to say which you know was really talk about what it was like to become a father mm -hmm. um there were certain questions about mortality about morality you know what i mean about mm -hmm. you know our fears as parents our fears as kids it, it just all made sense that um that you know it would it would really work with uh with my favorite monster with the vampire and it did it absolutely did i really really enjoyed this film i started watching it expecting it to be another vampire blood kill it's not it's a completely unique spin that you put on this film now victoria morales plays your daughter jane she nailed that role she was spectacular when you were looking for your jane what sold you on victoria well i i did not need to be sold on victoria i i uh I, I had been familiarized with her work. Uh, she had done an amazing sh movie called, you know, she's been working for a long time. She's got a, 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 a incredible list of credits, but she had recently done a movie called Plan B mm -hmm. and had worked a day on it with uh, my buddy, Josh Rubin, who is a producer on this, yep. who's also a great filmmaker in his own right. And uh, when Josh and I started working together, he said, listen, you're going to think I'm crazy. I worked one day on this movie, but the star of this movie, Plan B, Vic, I think you guys are going to like each other. I think you're going to connect. I think you've got the same sense of humor and the same kind of philosophy. You're going to think that you're going to think I'm, I'm crazy, but like, can we just see if she'll read the script? And I thought, well, she'll never read the script. It, you know, she's too busy and, you know she's a word i know you know working actors you know they're they're, yeah. they're hard to get and um anyway uh uh you know it was the middle of the pandemic and she had a little bit of downtime and she took a shot and she read the script and talked to me and and damn it josh was was right we became fast friends yeah. and uh and she jumped right on board you know and 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 the thing that 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 was you know of of the many things that's so incredible about her i think she really realized early on that you know this was something that I think we wanted to make that could appeal to, uh, you know, maybe young people, maybe kids, you know, there's that, that, that great term gateway horror, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something that, you know, parents could share with their cool kids or, you know, a niece or a nephew, um, you know, over a holiday, hopefully it's something that, you know, kind of has a little bit of something for everybody, even if it's not the most gruesome or, uh, you know, the most intense, it's like, you know, when I was a kid, I really loved movies that felt like, they were a little adult, but also, you know, fun. And and that was kind of what we were going for. Absolutely. And we all know the 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 base horror fans are the most loyal and dedicated fans in the world. Now the chemistry between your characters is very important for the film to work. And the chemistry does work and it worked out great. Uh, before you started shooting, did you and Victoria spend some time talking, getting to know each other better than you had, you know, you already mentioned that you met before, but getting that chemistry right to see if it would come through on the screen? 
You know, we did, uh, we spent a lot of time kind of going over uh, inspirations and sort of tonal stuff. You know, we talked a lot about Paper Moon and we talked a lot about Raising Arizona and we talked a lot about Near Dark and, you know, and and it wasn't all genre movies, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was sometimes just relationship movies, you know. Um, and so we, we, we spent a lot of time doing research, which is something I like to do. And luckily, uh, something she likes to do as well. Nice. Nice. Now your character is Francis, uh, has sort of a unique backstory to him. How did you come up with Francis's backstory and who he was? You know, I think I really, I wanted to give him an identity that was, uh, unique and that could kind of speak to being an outsider mm -hmm. and uh i'm a jew mm -hmm. and i'm a fifth generation new york jew so you know i don't come from the old country um we didn't come from the old country on my mother's side until you know way back my father's side uh uh were more immigrants uh from you know eastern europe but um you know i just felt like that was my way that I could maybe speak to more people who are not like me, yeah. but might sometimes feel that way. You know what I mean? Like it was just sort of, I think everybody's looking for, you know, the thing is, is that everybody's different. Everybody comes from some different background and, you know, and, and, and I think though that, that everybody's ever felt a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, you know, that feeling is the same among us, yeah. even if the circumstances are different. So I was looking for a way that I could maybe touch on that feeling and 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 connect to you know connect to more people. I totally understand. I'm a first generation New Yorker. I'm the only one in my family that was born and raised in Queens. Uh, my family, my mother and father, immigrated from Greece. My brother was even born in Greece. So I totally understand what you're saying. The one line. My brother lives in Queens. <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, the the one-liners that your character has, uh, the Jewish one-liners, really add a nice little comedic element to the film. Uh, are those meant to just give us, like you said, a deeper look into who Francis is and uh, his time period and all that? I, I think so. I think it's it's sort of an example of, um, you know, yes, of, of who he is, of his culture, of, of, of his language. I mean, I think Yiddish has always been uh, associated with humor, you know, and I think um, uh, like a lot of cultures, you know, part of Jewish humor is laughing and crying at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that, that, that we can celebrate. So I think, you know, that I wanted to sort of include that. And then at the same time, you know, I was also sort of selfishly thinking about a lot of, uh, you know, the Jewish actors who I idolize, you know, James Kahn or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or Elliot Gould, these guys who, you know, in the seventies and in the eighties, they were like box office idols, man. Oh, they yeah. were, they were, you know, they were hot stuff, you know, but they were also unabashedly Jewish. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I thought that it would be nice to sort of include sort of that cultural touchstone, but also not really make the guy, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know, not, not make fun of the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like, it's, you know, it's asking people say, you know, let's laugh together, not at, at something. For me, it rem I don't know if you remember this, the SNL skit with Mike Myers, when there were, when he was playing a woman, uh, uh, the two Jewish women. I don't know if you remember this or not. Yeah. Yeah. When he was, yeah. And they yeah. Just, they, they're all verklempt and yeah, yeah. it's sweater weather. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it reminded me of. Now, what is going through Francis's mind when he's in that motel room and this unknown girl just pops up, shows up in his room? For me, Francis just looks absolutely terrified as he slowly starts to realize that this might be his daughter. Well, I think, you know, the thing that I, I wanted to kind of constantly touch on is the fragility of the vampire, mm -hmm. right? Like vampires are of course often predators, but it's, they're not that hard to get, man. It's not that hard yeah. to get a vampire, you know, and they got to be invited in and, you know, the sunlight can get them and, and whatever else can, you know, can, can, can do the deed on a, on a vampire. So I think that the idea of kind of just examining this guy's like fragility, mm -hmm. I thought might be 
interesting and 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 fun to play with and then you know i thought what is uh you know what is a lone wolf vampire what does he least expect you yeah. know <laughs> is that uh you know is that is that a one night stand might uh might result in a uh a 15 year old blade showing up you know what i mean <laughs> coming into your motel room completely uninvited unannounced now exactly jane your daughter half human half monster half, not my, vampire uh she can tolerate daylight uh to some degree she has you know is able to do stuff that you can't stuff that would kill francis's character we have seen hybrid vampires in movies before how did you want to distinguish her from other hybrids that we have seen in past movies well you know i i think so much of making films is sort of stealing from the best <laughs> yeah. um and uh you know I, I i originally i just thought of her as sort of as 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 utilizing blade rules right yeah so i kind of tried to use blade as her uh uh um uh as sort of her her uh uh comparison vampire mm -hmm. yeah my guy is a little bit of a mix of you know what works and what doesn't you know i sort of the the cool thing about about vampires is is that there's so many rules that you do get to sort of choose which ones you want and 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 which ones you don't and you know as long as you get a few of the hits it, it kind of works it you does know? it does absolutely work now one of the most one of the other interesting characters is by cl simpson who plays uh sylvie i believe her name is what can you tell our audience about her significance and relationship to francis well uh you know the the, the movie is about this father and this daughter connecting um but i think as important as that is for many of us our chosen family mm -hmm. is as important as our blood family. And, um, and I thought, you know, that it made sense, you know, not in a way of sort of a familiar, not in a way of kind of like a Renfield type character, which may or may not exist in the movie. No, no spoilers. Um, but uh, I thought the idea of, of, of including someone who really, could you know one thing we know is this guy could have a history right he's oh, yeah. 150 years old so you're talking about somebody who's got a chance to have history with somebody and whoever he's going to have history with is going to be old yeah and uh and so you know i kind of started doing that math that that vampire math and i came up with this idea that you know he's got he's got an old friend okay. and that it's somebody who understands him and somebody who maybe might be able to tell him shit that nobody else could right and give him the the straight of it all exactly and as a drifter you know it totally makes sense that he would connect with at least one person that he does ultimately trust now do you think as francis does try to leave that drifter life behind and actually try to become a dad in his mind does he think it's going to work or does he have no confidence and he sees it all falling apart well, you know, there's a very specific moment in the movie where it sort of switches from being kind of all about what this guy is dictating and his idea of what he thinks is going to work to being kind of about this kid and, and, yeah. and this precocious, smart ass kid sort of dictating uh, how things are going to go. Yeah. And I think when that shift happens, uh, it you know, it, it really becomes a question. Is this guy going to show up? Is he going to do the right thing? Is he going to, you know, is he going to, is he going to be responsible? How's he going to be able to be a vampire and a dad? How's she going to be able to be a vampire and a kid? Um, and that's really what, what the sort of, you know, second half of the movie is about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, that is a conflict and, and, you know, I think, in some ways it gets resolved. I mean, I will give you guys one spoiler. It is a happy ending, folks. Yeah. I wanted to make a movie with a happy end. You don't see a lot of genre movies and vampire movies with happy endings. And I thought, you know, why not? Absolutely. Now, Jane's character, like, a, like you said, we're not giving away any spoilers, but she does go through an arc and we get to find out stuff about her as the movie goes along. Uh, did you toy around with that when you were writing this script? whether you wanted to include go that way, didn't want to go that way. What do you want to share about that? 
Um, about about what in particular? About who you know the whole vampire, who she really is in the background type of thing. Could she? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I thought I thought that that uh, it was interesting to not know a lot about her backstory mm -hmm. simply because then it kind of let her be whoever she wanted to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah. let Victoria, you know, there's a lot of times I was in the editing room and I was like, she's doing a impression of me. You know what I mean? And I was like, kind of, I didn't realize that when we were shooting it, I was like, take it aback. I was like, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know you had it like that shit. Um, but, uh, uh, um, on the other side of things, I think that there was sort of this opportunity because we don't ever meet her mother. Mm -hmm. There was an opportunity for Victoria to kind of create whatever version of that character she wanted to be, even though she knew she had to be a vampire. Exactly. Right. So again, it's like a little mini genre moment where you say, here's your sandbox, go play. You know what I mean? <laughs> here's what you do know. Go make up all the rest of the shit. You get to you get to figure that out, you know? <laughs> uh, we have enough time just for one more question. Like I said, you wrote, directed, starred in this film. You were also a producer. When it was you all very easy. It was the easiest thing I ever did. <laughs> I mean, it was a real cakewalk. I was looking at all those credits that you did, and I asked myself, okay, you're on set. Who do you turn to? Who keeps you in check? Basically, who do you turn to for advice when you're struggling on a path that you want to take? Is it your fellow other producers? You know, on a movie like this, it's everybody. Because if you look at the credits, you know, yeah, I, I did whatever. I did four jobs, five jobs on the movie. There's other people on this movie that did three, four, five jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is picking up the slack. It's the only way that you get to make a movie like this that doesn't have a big budget, doesn't have a long schedule. You kind of have to depend on each other. So luckily, I had Victoria opposite me most of the time, and she's keeping me in check. She's keeping me honest. She's she's telling me whether something's working. You know, we had amazing producers, Lial, Josh, Aaron Kuntz, uh, 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 Cameron Burns. I mean, great group of producers who were all there. You know, we got into the edit and, and, and my now friend who I had never known before he, we, we worked together on this Patrick Lawrence who edited scare me and mm -hmm. who invited them. He's like an incredible genre editor. Um, you know, he and I had to have heart to hearts every day in that edit room Yeah, and get personal with it. You know, I mean, that's the only, so, so I guess my point is that, that, everybody's leaning on everybody else it's exactly. the only way to do it and you can't have any you can't you can't the, the the pride is that you all did it together not that you did it absolutely and aaron Kuntz is somebody i've in, had as a guest on this show and i know he's a great filmmaker as well so it looked it looks like you surrounded yourself with a great team and ultimately that's what made this movie so good no i want to thank you so much and for our audience again the movie is called Bl blood relatives streaming exclusively on shutter uh premiered yesterday for me this is a father daughter story with a vampire background that's how i would describe it and it's a great uh father daughter reuniting for the first time story do you agree or disagree with that i i agree with it because i'm one of those people who thinks that all things can be true. I think that just because you make a genre movie doesn't mean that it can't have heart. Mm -hmm. I think just because you make a scary movie, it doesn't mean it can't have laughs. I want it all. Yeah. And I tried to make it all. Um, so, you know, I hope that this is something that has a little bit of something for everybody and, um, you know, and that people can enjoy together. I mean, that's the real dream, right? Is that, is that Absolutely. we all connect over this stuff. And it's, uh, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. I wish everyone has a great Thanksgiving. And for me growing up, Thanksgiving after the meal is the time we would go to the movies or sit down and watch a movie. If you're looking for something to watch tomorrow, uh, this is a great film to watch. It has, like Noah said, it really does have a little bit of everything. I want to thank our viewers, those of you who are tuning in live, those of you who will be tuning in later on to watch this. Again, Noah, thank you so much. Congratulations. You did a great job on this film. Guys, enjoy the holiday tomorrow. Until next time, on behalf of Noah Segan and myself, stay safe. Stay walking. Good night, everybody. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>